Uh, no, I love it. I love stick it. around, man. I, I love hearing your thoughts in the chat. Uh, the Akerno one specifically yesterday. We talked about Kushko in the chat a little bit. Mm. Yeah. What do you, you think know, of them while you're here? I'll tell you right now, there's, there's only certain times that I buy a CEO. I buy that CEO right there. Oh, any, every day of the week, man. Every and, and day of the week. Sometimes you got to believe in the CEO behind the company that he will get it in the right shape. Know when to push the gas pedal. Know when to push off. You know, certain people in the cannabis industry, certain companies in the cannabis industry, I feel like they press the gas, like uh, most of us know, they press the gas way too quickly, push way mm-hmm. too far into debt, and they just can't come back. <clears throat> I'm sorry. They can't come back. It, I just, it's, it it's impossible. It it's like, in this industry, too, it happened to a lot of people. It really yeah. did, unfortunately. It's tough. It's tough. You know, it, it, for a while, it was just how much can I grow? How much can the, mass produce mass produce mass produce. now i'm just like everybody looking for profitability well yeah. hey while yeah, we got you i'm just going to tell you right now kushko holdings will be on monday it's cannabis insider oh! with patrick and javier KSHB. on, on monday you're going to yes. have the ceo himself and then the following monday kyle detweiler ceo of clever leaves awesome Enjoying. So was a badass, you guys. Yeah. So Cleverly's and Kushko, two of the hottest stocks out there. Yeah, yes. a SPAC and, and my favorite CEO. I, I'm, you guys will know I definitely won't be missing out. Yes. <laughs> Mitch, is, Mitch is like co-host of the day. He's there. Yeah. Like, <laughs> questions really now. We'll Those take are the them. times that you guys just see me in the backstage and I just don't leave. I'm just... Oh, we love it, Mitch. I, honestly, after it, that awesome interview with Gary V today, if you did, if you missed it, chat, go check it out. Incredible you guys, hour you, you content. cry yourselves to awesome. sleep tonight if you missed that interview because it was so yeah. good. Mitch, you I, killed it, man. I mean, from from I, I literally can say it. I was watching him four years ago in the speech live, trying to you know really get my life in order, and, and look where we are now. You know. Yeah. yeah. Hey, man, that, that's work right there. That's hustle. Mitch Hoak. It's Mitch Hawk, Hoak or Hawk? I've never asked you. No worries. It's, it's Hotch. It's Hotch. Hotch. Hot, 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 like Hotchkotch. Hot, 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 it's massive. I, I compare it the apple of cannabis. You 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 saw me mention that in the comments. Yeah. That's the way I see it. It's the it apple. Is. It and, is. And, 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 and then the cool part is is that they, they're working on the customer service just like it is when you walk into an Apple store. You know, you're yep. gonna get that person coming up to you. You're gonna get this the someone showing you the all the fancy gimmicks, all everything they, they got to offer. And and tr- truly a lot of the, the consumers need the information. So I just, I personally feel like with the rumors of them looking at other markets, what if they do it again? They can. I can tell you right now, like, as being inside a store and, and seeing it, 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 it definitely gets you thinking like, man, I never thought this could happen, really. It's yeah. so cool, though, isn't it? Well, it, did, it is. did you Did you walk around the whole complex? The that's whole what thing. I thought. Those of you who haven't been in Vegas... And, and you should go, right? If you're going to Vegas, you've got to go. PLNHF. Thank you, Aaron. Pull it up. Um, but, but the store is so cool. But here's the coolest part. They've got all of this square footage, you know, there in, in Vegas in this complex. And they're leasing it out, right? That's this deal that just happened with Cureleaf with the select, I think it's select brands, right? They're going to do like a special, like kind of pop-up shop leased space from uh, Planet 13, and there's they're they're gonna do like uh, consumption lounges and you know uh, they even talked about a movie theater. There's food there. Like these complexes are no joke, right? And they've already <laughs> talked about what Orange County's next, right? So, so come on. I mean, it's, it includes what we all like: reoccurring revenue. So, <laughs> <laughs> and we bro, do like that. We do can't, like that. Can't go wrong. Your you chat, man. Appreciate you and your insights. Signing out. Later, guys. Good. Later. All right, Aaron, get us pumped up again. Happy Wednesday.
Hump day! Hump day, baby! Hump day! Welcome! It didn't feel like a hump day to me. It felt pretty good. I know. It felt pretty good. Tuesday felt like more of a hump day to me, y'all. Um, so we're already talking about PLNHF, y'all. Um, Patrick, I've talked to, to Javi twice about this. I've never gotten to talk to you publicly about it. Let's so go. show me your facial expression when I give you a quote from Viridian. Uh, the Planet 13 dispensary in Las Vegas is the single best asset in the industry. Yeah, hands down. Hands down. Mm-hmm. The only thing right, that you well, can Javi is the only one who differs. No, well, listen, Javi's partial to what? New York? Did he say Manhattan? He does love or, East Coast. He, he's he does. Coast fan. Yeah. Well, and you can't, I mean, it's hard to argue, right, that like guy. a dispensary in Times Square uh, is is not going to do just as well, if not better, than Planet sure. 13 in Vegas. But come on now. Come on. Yeah. Like that asset, if you guys, if you haven't been there, right, especially once the whole COVID thing is over and travels back to its pre-COVID norms, uh, hopefully it gets there, right? Fingers crossed. I mean, it's it's hands down the best yeah, asset in the industry, I think. Um, and they're currently really unmatched in that in in that Vegas market, and others have been there yeah. for a while, and they're still unmatched. Yeah. Uh, anyways, y'all, welcome to Cannabis Insider on a Wednesday, four thirty. We're here to wrap up your day with some cannabis stock talk. Drop Let's a one in the chat if you're ready to to chat with us, ready to hear about some cannabis uh, news. Drop your tickers in the chat. Uh, you know, Sundial, I believe they're up one cent right now and at a solid solid one dollar uh if i uh yeah still the same up one percent um so uh just go ahead and answer the questions there for everybody that was about to put sundial uh, but i want to start the day with forefront ventures uh they are as ffntf i think that's correct uh, that is right yep yeah ffntf forefront ventures um they are uh super in my opinion under talked about when it comes to uh, forms like this and we're at fault for this as well we continue to talk about your tier one operators like columbia care cresco labs true leave and for good reason gti uh they're awesome operators but right. sometimes these you know and tier two and tier three operators for me is not an insult at all <laughs> it's not a downplay on them uh i think it's just it's a stepping stone to success uh they are a leader in the washington state market uh, albeit tons of licenses up there, but they've still managed to have a pretty good hold, I, I think, on that market. They have Massachusetts uh, activations that have been very valuable to them. Um, and there's a confident long-term growth outlook, uh, I think, for their particular company. Patrick, do you have any thoughts on them? Yeah, I mean, th- those guys have been around a long time. Like, if you go back and look at the history of Forefront, um, you're going to hear one name really uh, frequently, right? It's Chris Crane. That guy's been around since the very onset of this industry. Um, when we even talked about a legal cannabis industry a decade or two ago, Chris was there, right? Mm-hmm. And I think he's, he leads at least one of the lobbying committees for the NCIA, um, National Cannabis Industry Association, for those of you who don't know. Um, I believe he's ex- executive chairman or something now, but he's, he's led that company for a long time. Um, and, and, and is an, an industry advocate, right? So mm-hmm. the, that kind of institutional knowledge, same with Nick, right? Nick Kovacevic from, from, uh, Kushko holding K S H B, right? We just talked about them with Mitch. Nick is one of the OGs. I think he was yeah. probably the first company to go public uh, in the cannabis space. So, you know, you're talking about two companies here to, to start the show that have really been in it from the beginning. Yeah. And they, uh, forefront also, um, their, uh, Illinois capacity expansion underway. So they're expanding in Illinois, uh, taking advantage of that market. So a yeah, third I hear that's a pretty good market. I hear, uh, apparently they're looking, uh, I think this is rumor mill stuff. So this is, uh, just something ear to the ground. They're looking at New Jersey. Interesting. So, okay. Um, you know, you wonder how valuable that market will be versus New York, but I, I imagine still quite a bit of money to be made there. Um, but I mean, honestly, forefront, tons of room for growth. I think they are predicted 2021. They're looking at like 170 to 180 million uh, in revenues. Uh, yeah. So honestly, we've talked about companies on here that don't even come close to that. Uh, and they're still right. great companies. So in my opinion, forefront, uh, a great long term play. Uh, not advice, just something that I personally feel. Sure. Uh, yeah. Any other thoughts there? 
Not not on Forefront specifically, but there's a couple questions in the chat here about one that I know is one of your favorites, uh, Cureleaf. Ooh. Right. Uh, JP asks, uh, well, well, yeah, Sir, Sir Dirty, by the way, great name, Sir Dirty, <laughs> is talking about their monopoly in Florida. But JP asks, what do you think of Cureleaf's European acquisition and rebranding to Cureleaf International? So it's, um, how do you say the damn company's name? Emac? Emac. Emac, right. Yeah. See, I knew I'd pronounce it wrong. But um, Emac was a great play. But I think you have sure to understand. Was. Yeah. And listen, I think this is an incredibly intelligent, and this is my personal opinion, so don't consider this law, but it was a really smart first move over there. But I think you're going to see Cureleaf, uh, I think their expansion uh, is going to make, <laughs> I don't know. I think what I'm trying to say here is there's not a lot of competition for Emac right now. Yeah, no. I think it was UK. very, very smart acquisition. Yeah, I think so you they, guys, they got them yeah, really go early. That's that's what I'm trying to say. Like there wasn't like there was a few companies they could have acquired, but not like they didn't have like a list of 20 powerhouses to choose from. No. So well, and look at this. Look at the look at how they've done this too. The news that came out today is that they raised about 130 million. They being Cureleaf ticker again is C U R L F. Um, they raised 130 million uh, to fund the cash closing, right? You don't just raise 130 million, right? Like there was, um, who was Richard it? Boris Jordan. Uh, Pharmaciello, PCLO, right? A, a, a Latin American um, company, also Canadian and European holdings, right? They did this sort of overnight offering, um, and they raised about 13 and a half million, right? So 13 and a half, a decent sized company, right? Yeah. Pharmaciello, I don't know the market cap offhand, but it's at least 150, 200 million, right? And then Cureleaf. 130 million, boom. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. We need to fund some closing costs. Bam. Got it. Um, well, it's the same with Air Wellness and GTI. These giant raises. Uh, when you didn't see any raises last year, you saw yeah. zero. And now all of a sudden, Air Wellness has you know just out of nowhere earlier this year that hundred million dollar raise, and they won't even tell you where it came from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that's a it's a valid point, and I think listen. To call themselves Cureleaf International at this point is a statement, right? Mm -hmm. Boris Jordan, that executive chairman over there, he's good at this. He makes statements, right? He, he knows what he's doing when he's expanding the footprint. He's done it before in other industries before he got into cannabis. Um, and, and I think that international moniker is is a statement that he's making. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it is huge. And don't get me wrong. I think getting into that market now is genius. Um, you know, the UK is, uh, I think the first major acquisition in that market, but you have others that are already Absolutely, expanding yeah. and buying assets like flower corporation. And, uh, I think it was what Portugal, uh, you have, um, yep. you, you have some that were buying on the Eastern European side. Uh, I heard several, a, a lot of people in, in Portugal, but Germany really is the market that I keep hearing about being the one that, you know, that that's the one. That's the one that all roads, you know, should lead to Germany when it comes to European expansion. So it'll be interesting to see Cureleaf's next move too. Yeah, for sure, for sure. I, but I think it's interesting, right? Like the and another thing to take away from this is that when you look at the focal point for a lot of the cannabis industry over the past year and a half, let's say, so especially since the market wasn't doing that well, mm -hmm. it's been U.S., U.S., U.S. Right? U.S. is the market. U.S. is a great market. I think we're all waiting for the other shoe to drop here. Uh, clearly, we see companies moving and 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 making those those acquisitions, right? But we're seeing a lot of international play, right? We talked about IM Cannabis. That's IMCC. Um, we've we've talked now about Cureleaf and 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 Emac, um, and there and there are others, right? Moving into some of these, the Candoc out of out of Israel. Candoc. They just made yeah. A, yeah acquisition. But you all talked about Monday, but yeah. We did, we did. But for those of you who weren't around for that, that's another huge international player backed by the same people, Michael Auerbach's group from Subversive Capital that did the deal with Jay-Z, the parent company, well, Khalifa. Right? And I, I think, look at Candoc. I mean, and I think they're they're looking at a NASDAQ listing here shortly. Uh, that's a play. Uh, let me tell you, mm -hmm. they partner with everyone. Tilray, Charlotte's Web, I think... Uh, several other big names that you would know. Just go look at Candoc's website. It's all on there, but or Subversive Capital, one or the other. But regardless, like that, that's an incredible international play. But don't forget about Mexico. 
I feel like that conversation was uh, yeah. really was really popping for about a week, and now we're all done with it. Uh, <laughs> like yeah. you, you have to think about where Clever leaves and Chiron Life Sciences, you know, and Pharmaciello and Avacana, you know, uh, are they poised to make an immediate uh, play there? Uh, Absolutely. You know, because the U.S. companies certainly aren't right now. Um, maybe Canopy being Canadian. I don't know. But, I mean, you look at Clever Leaves, you know, Chiron, Avocana, Pharmaciello, those major Latin American producers. I, I would keep an eye on them uh, in terms of the Mexican uh, opening, the market opening. And also, Sir Dirty is killing me here. Uh, there's plenty of money to be made in Jersey, man. I wasn't saying that. I'm just saying, look at, you know, New York's $7 billion market. That's all I was saying. Um yeah, but he's got a great name, so you yeah, got to leave him alone. That's fair. You're dirty. Don't uh, worry. I got your back, pal. Purely um, has a monopoly in many areas of Florida. Maybe, well, but I mean, yeah, you're yeah, not gonna, yeah, yeah. Cure Leaf has a really good strategic Florida presence, yeah. right? When you think of Cure Leaf, it's strategic. True Leaf, I mean, it, when you talk about a monopoly, True Leaf has a monopoly in Florida. Like, I don't think anybody's anywhere near close to to that's being exactly on exactly where road, I was going. Yeah. Right? They, um, they have like quantity. It's just everywhere. Like, True Leave is everywhere. Yeah, yeah. What do you think um, about Florida? Are they ever going to legalize rec? Ever? <laughs> yeah, I'm just curious, uh, ever. If, if that's ever going to yeah, I don't know. I, I don't think know. I think it's been on the ballot about 500 times now. So we know we know Nikki Freed, I think is her name, uh, who's who's the – the she was like the agri- the head of agriculture, oh, sure. Sure. right? So, yeah. and, it, and hemp and the medical cannabis space was kind of under her – jurisdiction for a hot second so uh, it, it's it, she struggled with it right and god bless her she's been trying but that that legislature there is really really tough right and yeah and almost backwards to the extreme so who knows who knows all right acb we're getting asked about acb let's see where they ended ACB. up today um one second one second let's pull up the index here we haven't talked about them in a while we haven't. We have, well, to be honest, there hasn't been that much news, right? They really so they're, <laughs> they're down about six, almost six and a half percent today. Nothing major. Seventy-two cents. Let's look at the chart here. I mean, um, it fairly consistent. You know, listen. I, every time Javi's on here, I'll, I'll be Javi for a second, Elliot. Um, Javi believes in the Canadians. He definitely believes in uh, the big Canadians, right? So Aurora, Canopy. Afria, Tilray. I know we had somebody asking about Tilray a second ago. But that's um, global now. That's global. Like, well, yeah, yeah. But think about like, it. Think about it. When it comes to those, like Afria obviously is is one of the bigger LPs, right? With Canopy, with Aurora. I would say those three have been jockeying for dominance in that Canopy, market for Canopy years. Canopy has U.S. activations, you know, and Aurora may, I don't, I honestly don't know the answer to that with Aurora, but you know, for me, like if, if you're going to look at a cannabis play, um, I, I I get confused, honestly, with the, with the can- Canadian market. I think there's yeah. a ton of amazing companies up there. Uh, I think Aurora is one of many you could look at. But why not Hexo? What, what is the pro- What is the u- ultimate problem with Hexo versus Aurora, other than the fact that Aurora has been around a little bit longer or has been a powerhouse, we'll say, a little bit longer? You know, uh, Hexo was a powerhouse. Yeah. So there's nothing wrong with Hexo. Like I think some of it is just in our in our minds as investors, what we're looking at. Who's biggest and flashiest? Aurora was that for a very long period of time. You look at their latest um, revenue, and it's kind of flat, right? There's nothing really happening, and I think probably because they've had to jettison a lot of assets, jettison a lot of employees. We talked about that a few days ago on here. Um, and we're kind of wondering, all right, so Canopy is getting back in the acquisition game. Hexo acquired Zenibus for $235 million in stock back in February. Their revenue increased another 12% uh, as of March 18th. They announced that. So they, what was it, 30, almost $33 mil, their revenue in Q2. Um, so, yeah, I, I think Hexo may be yeah. a better play. Chad, don't get me wrong. I'm not calling Aurora a powerhouse. I'm, I'm not like... Um, I don't know. For me, Aurora, <laughs> they gotta, they gotta do a little better for me to be in there, man. Uh, but at, at the same time, like they have been around forever. And if any company is gonna bounce back from being down, it's a company like Aurora. Yeah, it's a good point. 
So, Good I mean, point. maybe this is a safe one to buy the dip, you know? Um, I, I think Aurora will at least it'll at least be a part of a major M&A. Uh, that's how and, I look at these things. Yeah. I don't know if that's, I mean, it sounds like you're you're the same. You guys in the chat, let us know how you look at these stocks, right? Especially in cannabis, if you're buying the dip or if you're, you know, in, in hopes of acquisition or not. But when I look at some of the, you know, and I think that's what Elliot means by powerhouse here, right? Um, but when I look at like an Aurora, right? They were top of the world in cannabis. Yeah, not not even, their brand. I'm talking about their brand. Everybody knows who they are, you know? What do you mean brand? What do you mean? Well, I mean like the, the brand name Aurora Cannabis. Yeah, yeah, that's that's in the, yeah. yeah. So the largest, flashiest, used to be top of the heap, right? Uh, number one company in the world uh, at one time. I th I think I would buy the dip in that company, right? Again, not advice, but I would say either they'll figure their stuff out and they'll rebound, or they'll get bought, right? Yeah. Either way is 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 not a horrible outcome if you're if you're in there. Yeah, I agree. Um, but I mean, like for me, I I would you know. I, I think if you want to look at some other Canadian players, I think Christina Lake, a young player. Love those guys. I mean, they CLCFF. Yep. I mean, I, I look at I look at my watch list on Cana Canadian or cannabis stocks, rather not Canadian stocks, but cannabis stocks, and they're pretty much always like green and like just slightly better than the previous day. Um, I, I I like Christina Lake a lot. Um, you know, so that that's one Village Farms to me is. It's a no-brainer. Yep. Yep. Huge, you know what? Huge Village Farms fan. Let's let's shift gears for a minute, only because I saw this a second ago and I wanted to call them out. I like this company personally. Um, I don't know how you feel. Love to get your take. But CBDHF, CBDHF. This is Hemp Fusion, right? Now these this is the same management team from the Green Organic Dutchman T God. For those of you who are not familiar with that Canadian operator, right? But Hemp Fusion is interesting, and I think they just announced news that they were approved and up and running on the um, – uh, gosh, I'm going to forget the name of it now. But it's it's like the Alibaba virtual mall in, in the Chinese market, right, with their CBD products. So, listen, there, there's a lot of CBD players. If you go on Amazon these days, you can say it's, you know, whatever it is, hemp infused in order for it to make it past the – the the Amazon filters right, but to be on an Alibaba platform right, especially in the Chinese market, which they have feelings about CBD. They, there's talk about banning it, but there, there's also talk about expanding it. Right? Who knows what's going to happen? But props to these guys. They came on strong, and they haven't been public very long, but um, they've been killing it. I love Infusion, and I mean they. They're they're spending some dollars on marketing, but like as any big corporation will, right? I mean, they I think they're branding a NASCAR car yes, now, if that's I'm right. not mistaken. Yep. Uh, so I mean, their brand is out there, and he has uh, interesting ties with his wellness brands to Amazon. Um, so I mean, I mean that's something to keep an eye on there with him fusion. Uh, now, granted, it's CBD, so I mean it's a little bit less. Uh, We'll say miraculous to have ties to Amazon, but he is um, he, he's doing a great job at getting his product out there. Jason is. Um, so I, I'm a big fan of him fusion. And I think they are, where are they in Europe now? Aren't they in like the Portugal area as well? They're, they're expanding pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. No, they, they jumped the pond. Um, you know, they're, they're all over the place, right? They've got, because they're CBD, right? It's not right. as bad. They can be in the U S and Canada and all over. So they are, uh, they are making the move. Okay. Ooh, Chad Smith, I got, I mean, I'll, I'll tell you who I like in Virginia. Let's see, who is the go to investment in Virginia now that the governor is speeding up to the summer versus 2024? I, I love am that, a big by the way. fan of Jushi. J U S H F. That is my personal, um, well, well, I mean, I love Jushi. I think they, they rely so, they rely very heavily on data, product yep. trends, they utilize their own assets. Uh, in collecting that data in a very efficient and timely manner. So, I mean, they're on the pulse of their consumer base. And that's not something I hear a lot from other uh, top-tier MSOs. And I think they're widely considered a top-10 MSO. Wouldn't you say, Patrick? Yeah, absolutely. I think absolutely. They're, they're like a 5 to $6 uh, share right now. I mean, uh, super big value. Market. Almost 7 6.86 is what I have. 6.86, sorry. Um, so Jushi is a great company, great company. And in the few minutes we have left here, um, 
how about this? How about um, OGI, right? Let's cover Organogram since they had news today. Um, let's also leave the audience here, Elliot, with each of us. No. Let's do an underrated American cannabis company, right? Let's let's leave out the major MSOs. I'll talk about OGI for a second, and why don't you look at uh, an American company you want to talk about? So OGI, so dirty, that that ain't legal, sir. Dirty, bro. That's not legal. I just order a pack of joints from Oregon. Exactly. Mm, yeah, yeah, pro. That's not legal, my friend. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck with it. I, I, I don't yeah. believe you. Um, that's a no for me, dog. Um, yeah. But um, anyway, yes, you start. Okay. So they they, uh, they bought an edibles manufacturer, um, uh, Edibles and Infusions Corporation for about 22 mil, right? Um, now, the, of course, the story with, with OGI, uh, and they've done very well since this, is that they had that investment from uh, the, I believe it was British American Tobacco, BTI, I think was the uh, the ticker there, yeah. right? Uh, correct me if Not I'm wrong BAT, there. BTI. Yeah, BTI. But but a giant investment there. Again, big tobacco is getting into the space. They want to make sure that they have a cut of all this. Makes sense. Um, they've been around a long time. And OGI has been poised for growth, right? They've been like Hexo. They've kind of just been biding their time um, so anyway, I am bullish on this company. I think that, you know, in the long run, OGI is going to be one of those LPs that makes the jump, right? There's a lot of the LPs that won't, by the way, I think we know that, but the, this is one that I'm bullish on. Hmm. I'm bullish on a lot. I'm bearish on a lot. Um, as is every investor, that was a stupid thing to say. I'm going to go uh -huh. with. Sky Bioscience. Okay. S-K-Y-E. I'm going to go a little bit different today. Um, they are synthetic, uh, so I know that's probably their biggest downfall. So I'll put that uh, to the side in terms of what people think of as downfalls. But Sky is getting a ton of positive coverage right now, uh, a ton of positive, uh, I would say, feeling uh, around the delivery uh, of their drug and the effectiveness of it. Uh, they, spe they specialize in ocular, um, ocular biotech. So I think they were able to play off the news of the GW acquisition very well. Um, and, and I think you'll see this one slowly grow. I mean, it's a biotech, it's clinical stage. It's not going to be an overnight player, uh, but just for the sake of being a, a different non-rec play, uh, I think Sky Bioscience, a cannabidiol-focused biotech, is a very interesting play. Yeah, I like them a lot. I like them a lot. I think that they've done well since um, the split from Emerald and and everything that's gone on there. So I like this company a lot. I think they're they're very cool. Um, here's the other thing: when it comes to to sort of the underrated companies out there, one that we don't talk about enough on this show, but we probably should is slang worldwide slang world talked about them yesterday no you did not really yes we did but go I, ahead i, I, I never watched the no, shows i want that. your opinion oh, well, that, that's slgwf slgwf right um now look if you look at the stock 32 cents right not a ton uh a dollar 50 or no geez uh one and a half percent down today means nothing in the in the life of well, the stock it's like a penny but, i want to pose a question to you as you do this and then you finish your thought ahead. here. Yeah, go ahead. Um, they have a huge footprint. I think it was like huge. 14 states, 3,000 stores. Yep. And their revenue is, to me, doesn't match. Well, well, and here's the thing. Here's the thing, you guys. Um, 3,000 stores, not a retail footprint, right? They are a house of brands, right? Right. Like, I, I think, you know, and I and I know Chris Treeson, the CEO, very well. A really good guy. Solid work ethic. Solid um, ideas. Right. And when he took over as CEO from Peter Miller, um, not too long ago now, uh, I think under a year ago, the goal was transitioning to partnerships. Right. And I think you're seeing a lot of that now. Right. You're seeing slang get in with um, with cookies. Right. Uh, and, and we all know how popular the cookies dispensaries are. You're seeing uh, them get in with um, companies like like Tilt or or Canadian uh, retail shops, right? They are expanding their footprint, expanding their brands, and doing their best to move through partnerships rather than opening their own 
shops, right? So it's smart. It's kind of like what um, Gary's done at Tilt, right? Tilt yeah. Holdings, another great company. The man. Yeah. But um, Slang, highly undervalued, I think, only at 32 cents on the share uh, for, for the, the footprint that they've got. I'll give you one more uh, for, for fun. Uh, pineapple. What is that? PNPL. Uh, they are, uh, I, I just keep an eye on their news coming up in the next few months. Oh, I don't think interesting. I, I don't think it's, uh, it, it's going to be anything that's going to be like, it, it's not going to, I don't know. <laughs> I would just say, keep an eye on them. Put them on your watch list. We'll Elliot knows something you don't know. That's what's happening right now. Put them on your watch list is uh -huh. all I'm saying. Uh -huh. Um, but they are a really uh, well-known delivery platform. They were uh, Debo from Friday was a celebrity influencer for them. They work with a ton of different celebrities. They are um, their board is taking shape. Um, I think they they have some interesting locations, uh, retail footprint-wise, that are going to be very beneficial to them. Um, they've announced that. But you know, pineapple to me is a very interesting play. I think they're right at fifty cents. Uh, I know sorry. we got to go, Elliot, but you have to answer this question. Okay. It's like Psychotropic Thunder. Thank you, by the way, for that ridiculous and awesome name. Uh, Benzing, I got one for you to look at. DXBRF, Elliot, that is Bell Rock Brands. Bell Rock, my guy, Chuck and Jen. I'm a big Bell Rock fan. Uh, they, I thought Dixie made a very intelligent acquisition uh, of BR brands uh, or I'm sorry, reverse. It was a RTO, so BR right. with Dixie. Uh, yep. But you know that that was a powerhouse move. I love Chuck uh, as taking over leadership of these companies. But Mary's Medicinals uh, was a huge brand. Yeah. Um, you know, so I, I I I'm a big fan. I'm a very. I big am fan. too. And, and you guys, we'll leave you with this thought, right? What's most important? Retail footprint, right? In in terms of a lot of these companies expanding and taking market share. What's the second most important thing in cannabis? Quality of product, right? And let me tell you, in the edibles world, it's either plus products, Dixie or Wana. Those three, all always at the top, right? Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, invest where the quality is. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I saw a headline that said, are all edibles made the same? I didn't read it. I just said no. Uh, uh, no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, on that yeah. note, y'all, Sir Dirty, my apologies for misreading like three of your messages. Appreciate you uh, joining us today. This has been fun, though. This has been very interesting. We talked about Forefront, uh, FFNTF. We talked about Dixie. We talked about Sky. We talked about Slang. Uh, we talked about Aurora. We haven't talked about Aurora in a long time. I know. That was fun. Uh, yeah. Thanks for that. Um, yeah, so guys, we'll see you tomorrow for Cannabis Hour. Uh, that's going to be fun at four. Uh, again, Nick Kovacevic, CEO of Kushko, will be on Monday. Uh, then we'll have Kyle Detweiler, CEO of Clever Leaves, on the following Monday. Uh, we will also have a clean tech small cap event. Learn how to trade clean tech stocks uh, on April 22nd. What is that's clean tech? What is clean tech, Elliot? There's yeah, some... clean tech. So uh, sustainability, renewable energy, electric vehicles. We're going to have tons Ooh, of CEOs talking about that space on April 22nd. Be there or be square. That's All it right. Thanks, everyone. Later, y'all.